what I did for my presentation was I modeled a medical LINAC in Jant 4. So to start off, uh, some of you might not know, what is a medical LINAC? So a medical LINAC or a linear accelerator is a machine used to create radiation to treat cancer patients. And so radiation can be a good option for treating cancer because although it does damage both healthy tissue and cancerous tissue, the cancerous tissue can't repair itself as well as healthy tissue can. So it's a really good way to um, eradicate those cancer tumors. There you go. So how does a medical LINAC work? So this is kind of like a internal view of a medical LINAC. So here on the left side is where they generate electrons. So they heat up a tungsten filament and it's gonna start spouting off electrons. And then this big tube is what accelerates the electrons. They send in radio waves in here and the electrons accelerate to close to the speed of light or around six MeV usually. And then they go over here to the LINAC head, which is this big thing over here on the right. So inside the LINAC head, what happens is there's a metal disc called the target and the electron beam collides with the target and creates X-ray photons. So this process is called Bremsstrahlung, which is German for breaking radiation. And so basically as the target slows down the electrons um, to account for that lost energy, it creates a photon or an X-ray. And as you can see by the picture, the photons are spread out all over the place. So next step is shaping the beam. Um, instead of just having radiation spraying all over the room, they want to have like a, a beam pointed and focused. So first there's this primary collimator that is kind of just like a funnel to get all the, get many of the photons to kind of go in a straight line. And then um, what I thought was really interesting is they have these over on the right side, multi-leaf collimators. And what these do, these can really precisely shape that beam to any shape or size of tumor. And then, so they test the medical LINAC regularly at a hospital. They probably test it like at least twice a week just to make sure it's working properly. And to test medical LINACs, what they do is they use a water phantom. So this is a picture of a water phantom here on the right. And the reason they use water is because our bodies are mainly made up of water. And then they'll generate a PDD graph, which is stands for percent dose depth. So this is the total, it's a normalized um, graph to show how much of the radiation got how deep on the patient. So this would just be like a one dimensional test. They just shoot the beam right at the water and just measure how deep it goes. So why model a medical LINAC? Um, as we all know, radiation is very dangerous. Uh, the amount of radiation that medical LINACs produce is pretty extreme. Um, it's compared to the amount of radiation that was found in the survivors of the Hiroshima, Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombing. So it's pretty intense. Uh, they don't mess around with this stuff. In fact, every single radiation treatment is modeled computationally before they actually give it to a patient. So they want to make sure that they know exactly where the radiation is going to go. They don't want to accidentally irradiate a healthy part of the patient and miss where the tumor is. So it's really important that these things are computationally modeled before the treatment happens to the patients. And then the best case scenario that I thought of, um, if we could create a computational model with some kind of AI to um, test a lot of different um, rotations of the medical LINAC, we could find like the optimal angles to minimize the radiation on healthy tissue and maximize the radiation on the cancerous tissue. So that would be kind of like a long-term goal of my project. So anyways, my goals for this project was one, to computationally model a medical LINAC. Two, I wanted to generate data to compare to experiment to see if my model was accurate. And three, add some extra features like some heat maps to visualize where the radiation is going and maybe be able to move some geometries. Because a real medical LINAC, they rotate 
all around the patient to get different angles. So that was kind of my final goal with this project. So what the software I used for my model was GANT4. So GANT4 is a free open source C++ scientific modeling toolkit created by CERN. And it's really widely used in research. In fact, the reason I found it is because I was researching articles about modeling uh, medical Linux, and a lot of them use GANT4. So it's a really good software. It stands for Geometry and Tracking. And this is a quote from their website. It's a toolkit for the simulation of the passage of particles through matter. And the areas include high energy physics, nuclear and accelerated physics, as well as studies in medical and space science. So now I'm just gonna go um, demo my project real quick. So let's hope that nothing goes wrong here. So this is the software I created here. Now, let me just explain the geometries a little bit. So here, this right here is the Linac head. So I decided to not model the generation of the electrons. I'm just starting where the electrons are already at six MeV. <laughs> And so they're going to, when I run a simulation, they're going to start here at this point, if you can see, and they're going to travel to, this is where the target is, right in the middle there. And then here after that is that collimator. And I'm going to, I can also rotate this, it's 3D and everything, but since it's a wireframe, it's really hard to see. So I have a script here to reset it back to this view because I like it the best. And then here's the water phantom right in the middle. So if I, I can put commands in here. So if I do run beam on one, I'll shoot off one single electron. And so you can kind of see what's happening here. Um, I can do that again. And so every once in a while, the Bremster lung will kick in and it'll produce that X-ray. And then it's, as you can see, it's kind of random, but eventually sometimes they make it through the collimator and actually get over to the phantom. So if I run a bigger simulation here, we just do 100. So now we kind of see the beam is forming here on the left. And then inside the head, it's just crazy chaos um, because of all those scattering particles. And then I didn't explain this semicircle here. It's made out of lead. So you can, all these geometries are have materials. And so this is lead. So it's blocking the radiation so it doesn't spray out behind the Linux head. And then the last thing I'll show you guys is I recently uh, rigged it up so I can rotate it. So if I run this command, linac head set angle, um, I can just set it to one and it's in radians. And then as you can see, it kind of goes around. And I can also run simulation of 100 again. And it starts there now and faces the correct direction. So I was pretty proud of that. And then just to show a quick extra demonstration, I have this script um, called rotate. So if I click on that, this would be like simulating more of a realistic treatment. So it's going to run, I think it's a thousand particles, and then it'll rotate to the next theta. So it's incrementing by like 0.1 radians each time. So this is probably, this it's pretty slow right now. It'll probably go for, to make it all the way around, probably like 10 minutes. So I can just quit it here. Um, let's see, if I exit out, it's gonna say it's not responding and everything because it's not done. But yeah, there you go. So let me just get back to my presentation and we'll talk about results. So first of all, the first result I had, I wanted to make sure the Bremster lung was happening correctly. And so I tested right after, so the electrons coming in are six MeV, and then I tested the spectra of energies that happen. And it was really hard to find experimental data on this, but here on the right, I have some analytical data that I found. This should be the general shape of the spectrum of energies. So here on the X axis would be energy. And then on the Y is, is how many particles. In this case, it's intensity, but on the left here, I use number of particles. So on the left is my is my data from my pro, uh, program. And then on the right is that analytical data. 
And then as far as PDD graph, percent dose depth, on the left, here's an experimental result. And on the right is what I got. So pretty similar. Um, there, there's some error in there that I need to go through and talk about as well. And then this was kind of more just for the visualization aspect. This is some heat maps I created. So on the left is facing where the LINAC head distributed the radiation, so straight on. And here on the right would be a side view. So as you can see, a lot of it just ends up near the surface. And then as you get deeper, it kind of tapers off, kind of like what you see on the PDD graph here. So yeah, I'm out of time here, but as far as future work, I want to create, um, I want to further refine the aiming of the beam. So have a lot of different angles right now. It's just theta going all around, but I want to implement different angles so I can get all around and hopefully focus the beam on a simulated tumor inside that, that water phantom. And then, like I said earlier, maybe some AI to see what's the optimal angles to get the most radiation to the cancer tumor and the least into the tissue, the healthy tissue. Um, and yeah, it's basically, I'm out of time. Um, here's a bunch of links to GitHub and my YouTube channel because I've been making lots of videos on my project. And yeah, that's about it.